All right, guys, welcome back to Lean Brothers. Today we want to talk about V folding. So a lot of times what we do for mantles, um, hoods, floating shelves, we lock miter and we V fold them. So this is our Circle T lock miter machine. Um, I can show you what it looks like here. So on this machine, this is a great machine that we've had. It's basically a a really, really nice shaper. And this shaper has a tilting head. So we can tilt the head and get two different profiles. So as you look, we just ran these through. So you can see we have two different profiles. And so depending on either the A or the B profile, it runs them. And then these, they fold up like this and lock together. So we get a really strong joint for those. And so the shaper, we have two different cutter heads in it, but they work just by flipping a button right here. We can flip that and the profile changes and then we can run our parts through. So we do a lot of e-folding. I mean, you can see over here, these are some little, some little shelves that we're making for a customer. And you can look at these boxes right here and you can, these ones are actually be folded on our five axis machine. So they have a true miter on them. Um, so just depending on what we're doing, we cut these out on the scene cell in one shot so they don't run through the lock miter. The other thing we do is for our crown nailer, we do an L shaped piece. So right here, we have these all glued up. So you can see on the end, you can see how they're lock mitered together. And then we tape them up and glue them, fold them, and then we put them in this jig and that holds them while they glue. So it's a lot faster than using clamps and they just, it just gets out of the way. So we're gonna show you right now how we V-fold one of these shelves. Okay, so Caleb here, he's gonna clean this off first. We showed you the, the miters, so everything's set up. So we used to use different tape. Now we just use blue painter's tape. It works really well. So we tape up our joints here and it's really fast, really easy and really accurate. So these small little pieces we actually ran on the table saw because they're so small, we can't really run them through the machine, but we need to fold them up. So he's gonna prep it out by taping everything up, getting it together. We do the same thing, whether it's a floating shelf, uh, mantle, um, hood, all those types of things. So push down on the tape, make sure it's good and solid. The nice thing is this miter is so accurate that it makes it really, really easy and clean and it holds really tight. So then we just put glue in each of the joints. Make sure we get good surface coverage. The nice thing on the lock miter is you can get glue in a couple of different spots and the extra surface area holds it even tighter than just a normal miter. So this is MDF, so it soaks into the, the grain just a little bit, but it's not bad at all. And we really just use tape for our clamps. So you can see he just folds it up. We put a little tape in the corners. Put a little pressure, get that joint perfect. And it holds it really well. Same thing on the other side. And that's all there is to it. So he'll add a couple more pieces of tape for some extra clamping to make sure it doesn't pop apart. But mitering and V folding is a, a big thing that we do in our business. And it saves an awful lot of time and we can use veneers we can do the same thing with those veneers so that we can have a more stable product, especially for floating shelves, which we do a lot of in our cabinets. So anyway, if you have any questions about mitering, let me know. And do you have any questions, Darren? So what, what are some of the common products? I know you've mentioned a couple of them, but what are some of the common products that you use deep holding for? Yeah, so we do box mantles quite often or different parts of a mantle. So we'll fold up legs for a mantle. We do columns, um, say on either side of a fridge or a piece of furniture. Um, this is a little, a different type of shelf. 
Um, we do, you know, floating shelves, whether they have finished ends or not, or they're going wall to wall or between the cabinets. Uh, when we do our hoods, a lot of times we defold the hoods unless they're a curved one, but we defold a lot of those parts. Um, there's there's tons of different applications for defolding. So right now, or in the video, you mentioned you use the Circle P machine as well as you you've used the five axis. What are some maybe other ways to get into V-folding or maybe some other machines or where I mean, did you start? Yeah, it can be as simple as just the table saw. So, which is the way we did these little small pieces on this shelf. So you can use a table saw to do it. Um, we have we actually have just a V-bit on our CNC that we do a lot of V-folding. We do speakers with that V-fold bit. Um, so you don't have to have a five axis to do it. You can do it on a standard machine. Uh, we've been doing that for a lot of years. Uh, so yeah, table saw, CNC, we like the lock miner machine so the guys can in the, our customs area can just do their own things, uh, makes it super simple. So there's a lot of different ways you can do it. So with a lock miner machine, how much was it? Uh, they're low to mid 20s, I think is where we, where they're at. I'm not sure right now, we bought that a few years ago, but. Anything else that, any other tips or tricks that you've learned that help the V-fold process? Tape. Tape is a clamp. That's probably the biggest thing. And the blue tape's been great because it doesn't peel veneers, doesn't leave a residue. So use tape for clamps instead of trying to hassle with bar clamps and, and squeeze clamps and stuff and trying to get your piece. Just use tape, fold them up, and, and it makes it easy. Okay, thanks for watching. We'll see you in the next video.